Hello, I am pleased to be joined today by Jennifer Broadhurst, Associate Professor at the University of Cape Town and also Value Member of the Mining in Dharma Next Generation Committee. Jennifer, lovely to have you here. Thank you, Colonel. Great to be here. So, Jennifer, I thought I'd start with a question around uh, academia's relationship with industry. Um, how close are you? Right. So. In, in, on the surface, we're pretty close in that, um, you know, uh, we have advisory boards. We have a minerals mm -hmm. advisory board within our department. We also have a departmental advisory board made up of um, industry representatives. And very, very helpful. We find mm -hmm. that we have made major changes to our curriculum. Um, particularly the undergrad curriculum based on the sort of input we're getting from industry. So I, I, I think we that certainly, and I see it with other top universities responding mm. well um, in that regard. On the research postgraduate um, level, a little bit different. What we're finding that there's quite a difference between uh, countries like what we consider the, the, the global north countries, Canada, Australia, uh -huh. um, where they do, they have a lot of input in, they, they, they really support yeah. the universities a lot. There's a very close relationship, pay for their research. Um, we are are not finding that and it's a culture there you know the government expects industry to pay for their own research and development mm. we don't get that in South Africa and a lot of my colleagues overseas say well you're not doing the the research that the industry needs but it's it's not really that there there is definitely where we get to that there's a disconnect here uh, positives and negatives because I feel that overseas when you are doing research that is paid for the university obviously this is in the best interests of of of, of, of industry um it's it can actually have a bias mm -hmm. towards what industry seems very often as their short-term needs rather yeah. than what they should be doing in the long term so i prefer to have a balance where you know, we are seen to be more impartial. And I think that's become more and more important in terms of uh, multi-stakeholder engagement. You don't want the universities, then they need to be neutral. That is their strength in being uh, having that convening power um, and being unbiased. So uh, I, I, I think that there is something to say that we the academia needs to maintain its independence, but we still need to have support financially. Um, and so there needs to be a relationship that respects autonomy. That is a difficult uh, 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 position or it's a difficult tightrope to walk across. And I think that we haven't quite got that right. Um, universities in, in 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 Africa, Southern Africa in particular, are really struggling financially and not getting enough support from uh, um, from industry, who tend to complain that we're not de delivering the kind of skills that they need, which is maybe a a different. Uh, 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 a question altogether. So yes, there is a relationship, but I don't think there's enough collaboration. Very interesting. When you talk about this collaboration, do you think academia is doing enough to meet the challenges of industry from from, from your side? Okay, so it depends on what kind of perspective you, you, you're talking about and what they consider to be their needs. So at the moment, they mostly the fundings become very short term, mm. uh, very much profit driven. Um, and so that's all they're really prepared to to fund rather than longer term, uh, um, more sort of integrated. They certainly don't uh, fund a lot of sustainability related research at the moment. In terms of, of undergrad, um, as I say, we 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 really at the moment we we've we've integrated this whole issues of big data analysis mm -hmm. artificial intelligence into our into our curriculum in response to what the industry needs i think there's a little bit of a breakdown there in that you know the the, the function of a university is to teach concepts and to teach broad basic 
yeah. skills, not to train people to do a specific job. And so there, there's a little bit of a breakdown where industry will often say they're not ready, ready for what to run a plant, probably not. Um, so there's been a little bit of a breakdown in that back in back in the in the in the in the good old days we used to have a lot of good, of on site training you know mm -hmm. we used to go into the field and and really do a lot of um we had a whole program of of training and development and and these days that seems to have fallen away and so the the industry is expecting more from the university in terms of having people that are are ready to do a specific job and that's not arguably not the, really the role of a university. It's to teach people to think, to to analyze, to to and to have basic understand basic concepts and have a broad base of skills. Um, that's undergrad. Once again, um, postgrad, they don't like these two year research degrees. That's to do with their short terminism. You know, they want answers to to questions. They find that these research degrees are not really what they're looking for. I think what we are seeing an, a need for is for continuous professional development, um, more professional, what we would call professional masters. It's a little bit of a disconnect there because we don't get such good subsidies for those type of masters from the government. So, you know, the, yeah. the, then industry has to come in and, and, and play in that field a little bit more. But I think there's a need there for the industry to for this continuous professional development for upskilling people in certain areas that the university is not meeting at the moment. Um, and so you, we, we're starting to see this in-house courses development mm -hmm. um, in some of the majors, but the universities could play a much bigger role there. Um, so I think that there is a need for universities and the industry to sit together and work through some of these disconnects, because there are some disconnects. It's, it's interesting that idea of collaboration. What what else would you recommend going forward to, to remedy some of the challenges that you've mentioned? I think that um, we've got to understand. It's it really is understanding where each other uh, are playing and where we mm. can, can, can can where there is the synergy, and. I think understanding how it's I think it's really important that universities still have the freedom to push the boundaries, um, even if it's not comfortable. So we talk about disruption for 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 um, for the industry. Um, and so there's there's got to be the some kind of a model that we can work towards together um, in terms of developing the type of skills. Um, I think continuous professional development is becoming more and more important um, and and having a model where we can have short term research, which often results in 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 benefits financially to the companies, but that we use some of that to subsidize longer term research. So, you know, that you pay some kind of research fee almost to have more blue sky, to have more um, possibly disruptive, um, more novel blue sky ideas that the universities can play with. Uh, you know, this is where a lot of the industry innovation, and particularly in South Africa, came from in, in, in the sort of 1980s, 1990s. Um, and there isn't a lot of room, wriggle room for that anymore. Mm. So I think it really is about sitting down and working and us understanding the the the, the industry model, the the industry model understanding uh, the the industry understanding the academic model and finding how we can work together. Um, I don't think there's still been enough of that. Even our advisory boards, it's very much what kind of skills do we do we need? And it's it's very, very sort of immediate, short term. Um, so I think that there's a lot of room for academia and industry to sit down and come up with something that could actually be mutually beneficial in, in the long run. And I think it's something that industry needs to do. I think that, you know, they need to take more accountability for where they are 
supporting the institutions that are providing their skills and providing their future leaders. Um, that's for sure. Yeah, the, the challenge of short termism versus long termism, I think, is something that's rife um, at the moment. And your pragmatic solution sounds quite interesting. Um, but Jennifer, I just want to say thank you very much for having this interview. It's been delightful speaking with you. Um, it was a pleasure to have you. OK, thank you very much. All right. And Thanks, Colonel. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I look forward to seeing you at Mining in Darba in February. OK, look forward to being there myself with, with students and future leaders in tow. <laughs> thank you. Bye.